Welcome to another GED math video from ultimateged.com. We will be looking at 20 GED math preparation questions. If you have our Ultimate GED math course, these should serve as an easy practice. If you don't have the course, we encourage you to get it at ultimateged.com so you can easily solve questions like these and pass the GED. Okay, let's look at our first question. Question 1. Write the number 455.32 in scientific notations. To write in scientific notations, we have to move the decimal behind the first non-zero number. Then multiply the new number by 10 exponent the number of times we moved. If we move to the right, then we have a negative exponent. If we move to the left, then we have a positive exponent. So here, we have to move the decimal behind the 4. Since it's the first non-zero number, we start from where the decimal point is and we move 1, 2 points to the left. So this will be times 10 to the power positive 2, since we move to the left. So our final answer is 4.5532 times 10 to the power 2. Question 2. What is the slope of a line parallel to y equals 4x plus 3? If you see a question like this on the GED, consider it an easy bonus point. There are two things you have to know and remember to answer this question. The first is that the equation is in the slope-intercept form of the equation of a line. y equals mx plus b. In this form, the coefficient of the x or the number with the x is your slope. So here the slope is 4. Secondly, you have to know that parallel lines have the same slopes. So if a line is parallel to y equals 4x plus 3, then the slope of that line must also be 4. So our answer is 4. Question 3. Which line is perpendicular to y equals 2x plus 5? A. Y equals 2x minus 1. B. Y equals negative 2x plus 5. C. Y equals 3 over 4x plus 5. D y equals negative 1 over 2x plus 1. The slope of a perpendicular line is the negative reciprocal of the slope of the original line. The reciprocal of a number is basically flipping the numerator and denominator. So reciprocal of 3 over 4 will be 4 over 3. Here, we know the slope of the question is 2. Since this is in the slope-intercept form of the equation of a line, just like we saw in question 2. 2 is the same as 2 over 1. The reciprocal is 1 over 2. The negative reciprocal of 2 is therefore negative 1 over 2. We are looking for the answer which has a slope of negative 1 over 2. Choice D has the coefficient of the x to be negative 1 over 2. That means choice D has a slope of negative 1 over 2. This is the negative reciprocal of the slope 2 in the question. Therefore, it's perpendicular. Question 4. The product of two consecutive integers is 30. Find the two numbers. This is a question that you can easily solve without using any mathematical methods. Consecutive integers are simply numbers that follow each other. So 3, 4, 5, 6 are consecutive integers. 25 and 26 are also consecutive integers. I'm sure you get the point. So we are looking for two numbers that multiply to get 30. The two numbers must also follow each other. The two numbers are 5 and 6. 5 times 6 is 30. Pretty straightforward if you know your multiplication table. Question 5. The product of two consecutive integers is 30. If the smaller number is x, write an equation to find the value. This is the same as question 4, just harder. We know that consecutive integers are numbers that follow each other. For consecutive integers, if the smaller number is x, then the next number will be x plus 1. So if x is 2, then the next number will be 2 plus 1, which is equal to 3. Product means multiplication. So we have the smaller number x times the next number x plus 1 to be equal to 30. We can expand this. We have x times x this will give x squared. Then we have x times 1, which is 1x, or simply x. 
So the equation is x squared plus x equals 30. Question 6. Find the area of the figure below. Use pi equals 3.14. The work here is to be able to identify that you can break this into multiple shapes. Find the area of each shape and add the areas. For this figure, we can draw a line here. So that we have a rectangle A and a semicircle B. Area of a rectangle is length times width. This formula is given on the GED formula sheet. We know the length as 12 inches and the width as 5 inches. We multiply it to get 60 inches squared. Next, we have to find the area of the semicircle. The area of a circle is pi r squared. This formula is also provided on the GED. So the area of a semicircle or half a circle will be pi r squared over 2. We don't know r. We know that since this is a rectangle, if this side is 5 inches, it means this side will also be 5 inches. This means the diameter of the circle is 5. The radius of a circle is half the diameter, so we divide the 5 by 2 to get 2.5 as the radius. Now we find the area of the semicircle. Pi, which has been given as 3.14 times 2.5 squared over 2. We compute it on the calculator to get 9.8125 inches squared. Finally, we add the area of the two shapes. We have 60 plus 9.8125. This will give us 69.8125 inches squared as the area. To two decimal places will be 69.81 inches squared. Please. Questions here can be in any form. Break them into multiple shapes. Find the measurements you need to find the area of each shape. Then combine the shapes. Question 7. 3 over 5 equals 9 over n. Find n. This is a typical proportion setup. We will first cross multiply. 3 times n is 3n. And 9 times 5 is 45. We can now divide both sides by the 3. The 3 will cancel out. 45 divided by 3 is 15. So n equals 15. Question 8. A game shop sells a console for $25 and charges $2 for each game added to the console. If the sales tax is 10%, how much will you pay to have the console and three games? This is really what I call an everyday question. Questions that you don't need any special math knowledge to solve. We are going to solve it that way. Let's first find the total amount before taxes. The console was $25. Three games costing $2 per game will be 3 times 2, which is $6. We add 25 plus 6 to get $31. This will be the total amount before tax. Next, let's calculate our sales tax. A sales tax of 10% is added to this amount. So we will find 10% of 31, which is basically 10 over 100 times 31. This will be $3.1. Finally, let's find the amount you'll pay. The sales tax is added to the total amount to be paid. So we will have 31 plus 3.1. This will give $34.1. So you'll pay $34.1. Question 9. A game shop sells a console for $25 and charges $2 for each game added to the console. If the sales tax is 10%, write a function for how much it costs to have the console and X number of games. This is basically question 8, but a harder version. In recent times, there are increasing number of GED questions where they make sure you cannot easily solve using the simple everyday method that we used in question 8. Let's find the total amount before the sales tax. We can see that the first part of the question is like what we've been doing with two-step equation word problems. We said the $25 is the fixed value, and the $2 will be the revolving value. This is because we have $2 for each game, which is the same as $2 per game. We said if you see per game, or per hour or per anything, that will be the value with the x. So we will have 25 plus 2x.
Let's find the sales tax. We know that the sales tax is charged on the total. So we have 10% of the total. 10% is 10 over 100, which is simply 0.1. So we have 0.1 times 25 plus 2x. Now we expand. 0.1 times 25 is 2.5, and 0.1 times 2x is 0.2x. Finally, we add. We know that the sales tax is added to the total amount. So we have 25 plus 2x plus 2.5 plus 0.2x. We add like terms. 25 plus 2.5 is 27.5. And 2x plus 0.2x is 2.2x. So the function will be f of x equals 27.5 plus 2.2x. With this function, we now have a formula that can be used to solve for the amount for any number of games. We can use this to solve question 8. In question 8, we looked at 3 games. We can replace the x with 3. We compute this on the calculator and get $34.1 as expected. Question 10. Find the measure of the angle below. Here, the first thing you have to identify is that this is a right triangle because of this mark here. This means this angle is 90 degrees. We know that the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. So we can add 40 plus 90 plus B and this must be equal to 180. 40 plus 90 is 130. We have 130 plus B equals 180. One step equation. Subtract 130 from both sides to get B equals 50 degrees. There's a faster way to solve this, but knowing how to solve it by adding everything and equating it to 180 is so important I don't want to even teach any other way. This will ensure you get the answer correct no matter the twist. Question 11. Find x given the triangle below. Questions like this is the reason why I like the setup of adding all the interior angles and equating it to 180. We add up the angles. x plus 20 plus 2x plus 10 plus 2x minus 5 equals 180. We add all the x terms. 1 plus 2 plus 2 to get 5x. Then we add all the numbers. 20 plus 10 minus 5 to get 25. So we have 5x plus 25 equals 180. We have a two-step equation. We subtract 25 from both sides to get 5x equals 155. Then we divide both sides by 5 to get x equals 31. We could have been asked to find the actual angles. In this case, we would replace the x in each of the angles with 31. So for the angle x plus 20, we will have 31 plus 20 to get 51 degrees here. For the angle 2x plus 10, we will have 2 times 31 plus 10. This will be 72 degrees. And finally, for the angle 2x minus 5, we will have 2 times 31 minus 5. This will be 57 degrees. Question 12. Find the angle x below. You can have questions in which you'll need to use other properties of straight lines to get the interior angles of the triangle. The two most common ones are vertical angles and angles on a straight line. We've already done both. In this question, we can find angle B using the idea of vertical angles. We know that vertical angles are equal. So if this angle is 70 degrees, then the opposite angle B will also be 70 degrees. To find angle A, we know that this is a straight angle. Angles on a straight line must be equal to 180 degrees. So if this is 120 degrees, then A will be 60 degrees. 60 plus 120 is 180. Now we add all our interior angles and equate it to 180. We have 70 plus 60 plus X equals 180. I'm sure you can do this by now. We solve it to get X equals 50 degrees. There's another way we could have solved it, once we knew the angle B is 70. In a triangle, the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two opposite interior angles. So in this figure, the exterior angle 120 is equal to the sum of the two opposite interior angle. 
that's x and 70. So we can write 70 plus x must be equal to 120. We solve for x to get x equals 50 degrees. Notice we got the same answer. Question 13. What function represents the information in the table? A. f of x equals 2x plus 1. B. f of x equals x minus 3. C. f of x equals x plus 3. D. f of x equals 3x minus 3. Here, the best way is to solve it from the answers. We input the x values into the various functions and see if we will get our f of x values. For teaching purpose, we are going through everything. You don't have to on the test. You can accurately eyeball and eliminate obvious wrong choices. Since it's easy to work with zero, I'll try that first so I can narrow the possible answers. Replace x with zero for choice A. 2 times 0 plus 1 equals 1. It was supposed to be negative 3, so choice A is definitely wrong. Replace x in choice B with 0. 0 minus 3 equals negative 3, so choice B is a possible answer. Now replace x with 1 in choice B to confirm. 1 minus 3 equals negative 2. It was supposed to be 0, so choice B is wrong. Replace x in choice C with 0. 0 plus 3 equals 3. It was supposed to be negative 3, so choice C is wrong. So since choice A to C are wrong, it means choice D will be the answer. Let's confirm. Let's replace X with 0. We have 3 times 0 minus 3 equals negative 3 as expected. We try 1. We have 3 times 1 minus 3 equals 0 as expected. Then we try 2. We have 3 times 2 minus 3 equals 3 as expected. So D is definitely the answer. Question 14. A bus can take 12 students for a trip. How many such buses are needed to take 235 students for a school field trip? This is a straightforward division question. All you have to do to find the number of buses needed is to divide 235 by 12. You compute this on the calculator to get 19.583. For questions like this, when you get a decimal, you'll always round it up. Because even if you have one student left, you have to use a full bus to take them. So we'll round the 19.583 up to get 20 buses as our answer. This question was pretty straightforward. That's why we simply use division but the right way to solve questions like this, especially if complexities are introduced, is to use proportion. Setting up proportions is one of the most important word problem skills on the GED. For this, we will have buses is to student. One bus took 12 students. X buses will take 235 students. We solve for X. We first cross multiply. 12 times X is 12X. 1 times 235 is 235. Next, we can find the x by dividing both sides by 12. The 12 will cancel out. 235 divided by 12 is 19.583. You'll notice we got the same thing. The rest of the process is exactly the same. We round it up to get 20 buses as our answer. Question 15. What is 65% of 300? There are several easy ways to solve this question. You can check out our GED Math 2019 and GED Math 2020 for two ways of solving it. Here, we are going to use the word problem translation idea. What is what we are looking for so we can represent it by x. Is in math means equal to. 65% is 65 over 100, which is simply 0 0.65 in decimal form of in math is multiplication. Then we have our 300. So basically this question is 0 0.65 times 300. Compute this on the calculator to get 195 as our answer. Question 16. Which of the following is a point on the line y equals 2x minus 7? a. 2, 5. b. 3, negative 1. C, 4, negative 3. D, negative 2, 2. We know that for a point, 
The first value is your x value, and the second value is your y value. If a point lies on this line, then when you input the x value into the equation of the line, you should get the corresponding y value. So we start with option A. We replace the x with 2. We have 2 times 2 minus 7. This is negative 3. It was supposed to be 5. So choice A is wrong. Let's try choice B. We replace the x with 3. We have 2 times 3 minus 7. This will give us negative 1, which is what we expected. So choice B is the answer. Question 17. The following graph represents the score range of students in a math class. How many students are in the class? Being able to read and interpret graphs is a must on the GED. Here, the x-axis represents the score range and the y-axis represents the number of students whose score are within that range. From the graph, you'll notice that there are three students whose score ranged from 61 to 70. From the graph, there are five students whose score ranged from 71 to 80. From the graph, there are four students whose score ranged from 81 to 90. From the graph, there are two students whose score ranged from 91 to 100. We add these to get the number of students. 3 plus 5 plus 4 plus 2 equals 14. Therefore, there are 14 students in the class. Question 18. The following graph represents the score range of students in a math class. What percentage of students failed the test if the passing score is 71? Please, it's very important you master how to find percentages, especially from graphs. From the graph, we can see that three students scored 61 to 70. All the other students scored 71 or above. Percentage of students that failed will be the number of students that failed, which is 3, over the total number of students, which is 14, like we saw in question 17. This will be multiplied by 100 to get the percentage. Compute this on the calculator to get 21.43% failed. With what you just learned, you should be able to answer questions like what percentage of students passed and what percentage of students scored 71 to 80. Question 19. The following graph represents the score range of students in a math class. How many students scored exactly 95? This is a trick question. Most students assume that the answer is two students, since the 95 is within this range 91 to 100. This is wrong. A range doesn't tell you the exact values within the range. So the two students who scored between 91 and 100 could have scored 92 and 92, or 95 and 98, or 100 and 100, or any two numbers between 91 and 100. So the answer is, there's not enough data or information to answer the question. Question 20. Which of the graphs is a possible representation of the function y equals negative 3x plus 4? Here, there are no values on the graphs so nothing to calculate. Option A and B are obviously wrong answers because they are parabolas or the graph of a quadratic function. For it to be option A or option B, the function must have x exponent 2. Both option C and option D are linear function. The slope of C is going up, so it's a positive slope. The slope of D is going down, so it's a negative slope. Now looking at the function, we see that it's in the form y equals mx plus b. We said in this form the m or what is with the x is the slope. Here the slope is negative 3. Since the slope is negative, the answer will be choice D. We will end this video here. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Visit ultimateged.com and get our full GED math course with over 250 videos starting from beginning to advanced levels. Get all you need to pass the GED. Have a great day. See you soon.